Okay. We are discussing the general anatomy of muscles and we have done the skeletal muscle. I told you the muscles are being classified into three types skeletal, smooth muscles and cardiac muscles. Now we discussed discuss the smooth muscles. Okay. Smooth muscles are also called as visceral muscles because these lie in the viscera, internal viscera or internal organs of the body. For example, the stomach, the intestine and the ureter and urinary bladder, etc. The smooth muscles are also called as involuntary because these muscles are not under the control of our will but these are under the control of the nervous system but we cannot move them voluntarily that's why also called as involuntary muscles smooth muscles are also called as unstrip or non-striated because like the skeletal muscles they don't have the cross striations and these visceral or smooth muscles are present in the different internal organs of the body and the smooth muscles are made up of cells which are spindle shaped narrow cells with a single nucleus. The skeletal muscle cells you know they are multinucleated and the nuclei are arranged at the periphery while the smooth muscle cells are narrow are thin spindle shaped cells with a single nucleus present in the center. Now these smooth muscles are visceral muscles or non muscles they are present in the stomach and in the intestine in the uterus, in the urinary bladder, and in the bronchi of the trachea, etc. In the esophagus, lower part of esophagus, and so on. These smooth muscles, they, are, they have slow, sustained contraction. And because of this slow, sustained contraction, these smooth muscles do not get fatigue. In comparison, the skeletal muscles, which are very powerful, but they fatigue easily. That's why to maintain the body posture for the skeletal muscles, each muscle is not remain in contracted all the time, but some of its fibers remain contracted or stimulated, and some of its fibers remain, you know, relaxed, so that the muscles do not get fatigue. All right. But the smooth muscle cells are having slow sustained contraction. That's why they do not get fatigue. And now some of the body viscera, for example, you can see the intestine. Intestine. These are tubular structures. In tubular structure, what happens like this? The smooth muscles are arranged circularly, which are called as circular smooth muscles, and then longitudinally, which are called as longitudinal layer of smooth muscles. What is the advantage in that? In tubular structure, when the smooth muscle, circular smooth muscle contract, they squeeze the tube and this push the food, bullets of food forwardly. And when the longitudinal muscles contract, what they do? They withdraw the wall of the intestine in a forward direction so that the food is being pushed more forward by squeezing of the sulcor muscle. And the longitudinal withdraw the wall of the intestine upon the food in a proximal direction. This type of contraction is being called as peristaltic waves. 
and in tubular structure like it is time the smooth muscles are functioning in this way that the, in the peristaltic manner the, the subcutaneous muscle contract to squeeze while the longitudinal muscle withdraw the intestine over the bolus of food while in storage organs like the stomach the uterus and the urinary bladder in which the food the urine and the fetus are being stored and then at a specific time the mass contraction as a total is being needed to expel the contents for example the urinary bladder expel the urine the uterus expel the child and the stomach expel the food in such organs in such organs you look over here look this is the esophagus and this is the stomach and then this is the duodenum and small intestine and you know over here at the esophagus and small intestine the muscles are arranged in a circular manner and longitudinal manner and the method and the mechanism how do they act i explained while in storage organs like stomach are like the urinary bladder what happens the muscles are arranged in spirals and walls spiral and walls and these are being interlaced with one another and because of this that the muscle fiber are interlaced and they are being arranged in walls and in spirals so that when they contract they contract in mass and the whole organ contract from all around and so that the contact is being pushed forward for example the the child birth or for example the urine coming out of the urinary bladder so that for if if one side look if it if it would be not like that now for example see urinary bladder if this side contract the urine will push to this side and if this side contract it will push to this side it will not go out but when the mass contraction the the, the volume is reduced and the contents is being pushed outwards so in storage organs the smooth muscles are being arranged in walls and spiral and interlaced with one another so that mass a total contraction of the organ occurs and the contents is being expelled then the smooth muscles are being supplied not by the somatic nerves but by the autonomic nerves you know autonomic nervous system is also called as the involuntary nervous system so the smooth muscles are supplied by autonomic nervous system that is by sympathetic and parasympathetic the two parts of the autonomic nervous system that is sympathetic and parasympathetic it is supplied by sympathetic and parasympathetic generally it is said especially for intestine that the parasympathetic is motor and secretory motor that is it stimulate the muscles of the git and it stimulates the glands of the dh git to increase the secretion and it the parasympathetic is inhibitory for the sphincter now let let me say look look at the stomach look this is the esophagus again and this is the stomach and this is the pyloric sphincter through which the food will enter into the duodenum now what happens when parasympathetic stimulate it stimulate the contraction of the stomach muscle are being stimulated that is motor and at the same time this sphincter muscles must be relaxed if they do not relax then the stomach would not be able to push the food into the, the, the duodenum and it is because of this reason that the parasympathetic is motor and secretory motor and at the same time it inhibits the muscles of this this is inhibitory pulse for the muscle of the sphincter so that the sphincter is being relaxed and the food is being pushed forward while the sympathetic generally being said that the sympathetic is the sympathetic is sensory sensory and it is motor for the sphincters it is motor for the sphincters 
so that the stomach by itself gets relaxed and the sphincter is closed. While parasympathetic, the stomach is contracted and the sphincter is being opened or released. But this is very general. Now it is being proved that both afferent and efferent fibers are present in sympathetic and parasympathetic as well. So generally we say that the parasympathetic is efferent, which is called as e visceral efferent, that is modern. And this, the, the sympathetic is visceral afferent or sensory. But this is more general, okay? The sympathetic, the efferent and different fibers are being present both sympathetic and parasympathetic as well. Okay. This is about the smooth muscles. Now we come to the cardiac muscles. 